Thousands of Congolese went out in the streets of Goma in eastern DRC to protest against Rwanda's backing of the M23 rebels and to show their support for the Congolese armed forces. The protest takes place a day after the government reiterated claims Kigali backed the notorious M23 rebel group. Rwanda has been attacking us for 20 years now. Today we ask for the vigilance of the population. Today we all stand up for the cause of the nation and we are behind the Congolese armed forces. Our armed forces are fighting to put the enemy out of action. Rwanda is attacking us and today we tell Kagame to stop playing with the Congolese. Our government must know that the Congolese army is infiltrated. All these infiltrators must be driven out of the army and the police. And if they succeed, then the DRC will have the strength to beat these random soldiers who are causing us so much suffering. At the moment, our country is being attacked by a neighboring country, and we are not going to accept this disorder that has lasted for so many years in our country. And if we are gathered here today, it is to show our direct or indirect support to our armed forces. The rebels resumed fighting last November and on Monday took the trading town of Bunagana. Rwanda has rejected all allegations of involvement. Burkina Faso's army ruler Damiba Sandago traveled to Saitenga, a town in his country's north where insurgents killed scores of people over the weekend. For a commander who once blamed politicians for not supporting the army's fight against militants, this was an uncomfortable visit to make. Distraught survivors waited along the road as Sandaogo came to make an address. Nous sommes venus eh, pour vous exprimer dans un premier temps eh, la douleur. We have come to express first our sorrow and then our compassion for the people of Saitenga. De la localité de Saitenga. Ce qui s'est passé ici? What happened here? C'est c'est quelque chose de something unimaginable. For the population, for defenseless civilians who only want to live. Qui ne demande qu vivre. To justify his January coup, Sandaogo said the political class in Ouagadougou had not given security forces resources to confront Islamist militants in the north and east. De ces de nous. Some of these practices come from us, and we must avoid some of them because we cannot win this war without the people. The villagers who fled Saitenga accused the army of abandoning the town as the insurgents attacked. Ethiopia's Prime Minister Abi Ahmed on Tuesday spoke publicly about the possibility of peace negotiations with Tigrayan rebels who have been locked in a 19-month war with federal forces, dispelling speculation that secret talks were already underway with the Tigray People's Liberation Front, TPLF. Abiy confirmed that his government had instituted a committee to examine the possibility of holding negotiations. There is no simple negotiation. A committee has been established to study how we might conduct talks, and they are examining it, the possibility of holding negotiations, but they haven't reported back to the executives yet, hopefully within 14 to 15 days. The conflict has driven hundreds of thousands of people to the brink of famine, displaced more than 2 million, and left more than 9 million in need of food aid. Inflation if Baro would die, Inflation has been a huge challenge in Ethiopia. Given the crisis in the world and the conflict in our country, it has put a lot of pressure on us. The conflict began in November 2020 when the government sent federal troops into Tigray to topple the TPLF, saying it was in response to rebel attacks on army camps. Several people from the Maasai community in Kenya demonstrated in Nairobi on Friday. They're accusing neighboring Tanzania of using violence against their people trying to evict them from their land for tourism purposes. Maasai's in Tanzania have spotted officials marking off land, reportedly for a game reserve. The rights of the indigenous community 
living in Tanzania, especially the Ma community, and we are not going to move an inch from our cradle land in Loliondo, in Simanjiro, in Kiteto, in Kilimanjaro. We are going to stay put. The confrontation started in Tanzania, but many fled to Kenya to avoid repercussions. We are saying no, not to violations of human rights. People in Tanzania are dying. Women are being raped. Children are getting lost. And you arrest us. Why? We are the Maasai. We are not. UN expert says up to 70,000 Maasai could be displaced by the planned game reserve. We want the authorities in Tanzania to halt the ongoing demarcation process and the security operation in Loliondo. And we want the government to begin genuine consultation with the Maasai community. The East African Court of Justice is meant to rule on the merits of a case filed by supporters of the Maasai against the Tanzanian government next Wednesday. In the streets of Kigali Wednesday, many residents commented the cancellation of what was supposed to be the first flight from the UK carrying migrants to the East African nation. Seven migrants were due to embark on the plane under what's called an economic development partnership between the UK and Rwanda. However, a last-minute legal ruling grounded the plane. The fact that these migrants have not come is a loss to the country and the general public because their livelihoods would have benefited us and we would have been working together. And now it's obvious that this is a loss. We've helped other people in the past. I heard the foreign minister said that money will be given to Rwanda because it has received these refugees and they have skills which they can share with Rwandans. And it was an opportunity for us. If such a thing had been planned and still failed, then people don't believe in the country anymore. Everyone knows Rwanda is a peaceful country. Having such news, that they cancelled at the last minute gives us a bad image and now we are at a loss because we can't give the service we intended to give had they come. The number of those due to be put on the flight dwindled from an original 130 to 7 and finally none following ruling by the European Court of Human Rights. Rwanda's spokesperson said the nation was not deterred. The British Home Secretary added the government was not put off by the challenges.